And ready to go here in Montreux. Second semi-final, best of five sets. Japan in the red versus Italy in the blue. And away we go. Superstar from the Italians and a superstar from a very impressive player. Just 19 years of age, Elena Pietrini. Stands 1 meter 90 tall, and this is the incredible stat. She touches the ball on her spike at 3 meters 30. Plays with the Club Italia side. Julio Velasco designed a club side for young Italian players to represent that goes into the A-League in uh, Italy. And a lot of players in this squad from that development program. Nice start from Japan. Really solid offense from the high-flying Akia Agutagawa. <laughs> and a great shot from Sadakaiti. Well, she will be key to Italy's performance today. She will get them out of trouble when the pass isn't quite there. And she has the capability to beat any block in the world. Proved it on that opener. Lively start then from both teams. We've only seen three points. Great pass from the Bayer. Sarakaiti forced to tip. What a pick up. And both liberos functioning well here. Great rally. And in particular, a pick up from 26 year old libero Mako Kobate from the wonderfully named JT Marvelous Club. Flying. Look at that commitment. Wonderful. And then a nice solid smash off the blocker's arms by Japan's top scorer, Miwako Osanai, just 21 years of age. Italy go again. And super slide deep. Wonderful attack from uh, Sara Alberti running around the back of the setter to get a really good connection. Well, watch and enjoy. Japan used to recycling the ball, used to going again on attack. Good patience from them. And the tip finally put away past the uh, diving uh, Parasiali. The bear to serve with the unusual eyewear. Well, not the tidiest of rallies from Japan. Miyasato not getting the start in that setting position. 19-year-old Nanami Seki has started in the number 25 shirt, but she didn't find a single set there that was right on the money. Everything was manufactured by the hitters, eventually out. It's coming back. Good shot off the hands of the set at Oro. She will be used by the Japanese attackers. It's a wonderful retrieve from Sarakaiti. But an even better kill through the wing from Japan. Osanai to serve. It's out. Oro back to the service line, so it's a really tall front line at the moment. Villani, Sorokaiti for Italy. But stranded in the middle of that multiple attack was uh, Sera Luisa Far. Far in the number 13 shirt, one of the youngest players, incidentally, this tournament, just 17 years of age. Welcome to the game for the teenager. Great attack from Japan. <laughs> and Otto 
giving Farr the chance to get her own back. And that's what she can do. She is a ferociously quick attacker. She's got such a great arm swing. And she is a real talent in the making. Stands 194, Italy's tallest player along with Sorokaiti. That's really good work from Italy. And just like Japan, Italy have to be patient in these rallies. Super block. Well, Switzerland hosts a fantastic beach volleyball tournament on the World Tour each year in Start. Another wonderful development from Swiss volley. And uh, all this DJ music and uh, phrases that you hear the crowd joining in with it all comes from that beach volleyball tournament. Wako Osunai, just 21 years of age, just 1 meter 75 tall, but best scorer for Japan at the moment. Oh my goodness me, she's missed it, but that is just an insane hit from far. And the 17 year old is so high above the net. No wonder Oro is feeding her through the middle. Good serve, very good serve. And uh, Beatrice Parashiali immediately takes responsibility for that. The libero thought this was going out, but it's dropped like a stone on the baseline. Good surf from the young setter, Seki. Good chase from her to keep it in play. <laughs> and you can clearly see Italy's game plan here. Oro is going to feed far every single ball that she can because as far as they're concerned, no pun intended, she's got the beating of the Japanese middle players. Well, far with a contact point of 322. She's a good 10 centimetres or so higher than the Japanese blockers. But Japan don't care. You score a point past us, we'll score a point back at you that's the thinking and it's served them well since this team came to prominence back in the 50s they started winning titles Japan <laughs> Olympic Games silver medalists in 68 and 72 bronze medalists in 84 and 2012 but they've won the Olympic gold twice Japan 64 and 76 something that the Azuri the Italian women's team has not managed to do. In fact, best Olympic result for the Italians was fifth. And they've done that in 2004, 08 and 12. So that gold's still eluding them. Quick look at the second official's electronic score pad. Just keeps an eye on all the rotations. And just to show Italy's current strength in depth, they've got some real talent here at this tournament, but because of the Champions League final on Sunday between Navarra and Conegliano, two Italian sides, they're missing Marta Beckis, the setter, Raffaele Folli, the middle blocker, Monica Di Gennaro, the libero, Anna Danesi, Valentina Tirosi, Miriam Silla. The list uh, is almost endless, and that's just the uh, Conegliano team. Navarra. Federica Stufi, Paola Igonu, last year's MVP here at Montreux. Remember, Italy the defending champions at the Volley Masters. And still, with all those players unavailable, able to bring a really talented squad. pick up from Sorokaiti. Villani off the wing but not really had much to work with at the moment Villani. Well it's a miss. Italy get the point but there was the suspicion of a touch from one of the blockers here on the net 
What a pickup from Sarakaiti. And then as the ball sails wide from the Bayer. No, that looked fine. Good serve from Pietri. This is a net touch now. Villani transgresses over the line, into the net, pick what you want. Nabaya to serve again. Good pick up from her. Oh, that's a very nice hit from Osanay. And you can see why she's uh, leading the scoring stats at the moment for Japan. Number 21. Really gets off the floor, but she's so stable in the air, can pick and choose her shots off this Italian block. And this is a good service run. Japan back on terms with Italy. Well, sometimes it's not the way you intend to win the point, but they all count. Despite the very best attentions from the Japanese libero, Kobata. All of the Japanese players play in the V-League, as it's known in Japan. The Pro League dominated for the last couple of years by Hitsumisu Springs. And they've got quite a few players in the Hitsumitsu team out there on court. Villani at last into the action with a block. And that's going to be the contest today. Italian block versus multiple offence and ball control from Japan. That is special. Ishii started this match well. Standing captain for Japan, running the pipe and running it beautifully. Oh, that's clever for Moro. But doesn't get the point. And a touch signaled against the Italian block. Davide Mazzanti, the Italian coach, not happy at all about that one. Let's have another closer look. Well, that was all okay. And here's where the touch occurred. Just see from this angle. Well, you get them, you get them called sometimes, and sometimes you don't. But that one looked clear of the Italian arm. But no challenge, no review system, no VAR. Japan's point. Good serve. Oh, that is a quite brilliant hit from the baseline. And uh, Osana continues to impress. Yet three beaten. And Mazzanti forced to call a timeout for Italy. Gran bel cambio palla, eh? Solo una cosa, Ale, stai attenta sulle seconde linee, palleggiala un po' di più, eh? Stai palleggiando tutto da Dio. La seconda linea la pizzichiamo un po', ok? Così troviamo bene i tempi su quelle situazioni. E hey, Amura è tutto ok. Ci siamo? L'unica cosa, più attenti a tenere subito la posizione e poi a giocare con le nostre mani. Se c'è l'uno contro uno correte perché poi avete visto che poi è tutta roba sporca, ok? Dai, via! Well, Mazzanti just needs his team to deliver more than side outs at the moment. So they're coping pretty well with the Japanese serve they're getting the ball on the floor and keeping the scoreboard ticking over but they're not scoring a lot off their own service not putting Japan under enough pressure at the moment another jump serve from Osanai misses this one well, I think that's 15 all now we'll have a look at that for you but it's close whatever in this first set. 
That's not the answer. Oro, the setter, overcooking that one. What's <laughs> a block from far? Brilliant from Japan. Oh, that is sensational. Well, you might think there's a bit of luck involved here, but that ball was played directly back to the net, and you can get a bit of luck off the net. And Japan making the most of it, but really, it's all down to brilliant defence. Overpass, well controlled, really nicely contained by Otto. One-handed set to far. And what a luxury from a setter's point of view to have a player like this available. Otto knew all she had to do was touch that ball. Brilliant bit of setting. Great dig down the line from Otto. Uh, Villani hits out over the baseline, but I think her foot was on the three-meter line anyway, so it might have been called for a backcourt infringement. And a handy two-point cushion here for Japan. Super first set. Well, Far is the hitting outlet. And if she keeps going like this, she's going to turn in easily some of the best middle blockers figures for the season, let alone this competition. Unstoppable. Now, what's her serve like? Jump float. It's good. Oh, no, that's going to be... Well, I thought it was going to be Japan's ball. Seki, the Japanese setter, is back court, but, well, that ball was blocked before she had a chance to set it, so Japan a little unlucky. What a serve, and the Bayer under pressure. <laughs> oh, it's just a joy to watch. The Bayer one side, Ishii the other. And that's why Japan keep taking points. Superb swing. Far leaves the court to be replaced by the Libero temporarily. Parociali in the number 20 shirt, the different coloured shirt. And Pietrini with a great jump. She really puts her back into uh, the jump, does Pietrini. She's quite a slight figure, so her power to weight ratio is excellent. And that's why she gets so far off the floor. She's got a very quick arm as well. Pretty much everything you want for uh, a wing spiker. Now, interesting change here. This is a straight blocking substitution. So, back up opposite player Nicoletti in the number 22 shirt is in. And Italy will operate in the next rally without a setter. <laughs> oh dear. But there was no chance for anyone to volley anyway. Great, high quality volleyball. Magnificent serve. Wonderful pass. Incredible kill from Ishii. World class here in Montreux. Sorokaiti is out, so it's a double substitution. And uh, in comes the captain. Oh no, sorry, in comes uh, Camby. Goodness me, so Malinov can't get a game at the moment. It's Otto and Camby, the two backup setters. And that's not a bad starter from Camby, who hasn't featured much in this tournament at all, the uh, playmaker in the number three shirt. Another point chance, Italy. Camby keeping it simple. Just feeding the big attackers, but Japan defending well. And Italy again, just couldn't quite stay in the rally long enough. 
The commitment from these players in defence is just sensational. There was very little chance that ball was coming back. But Piatrini just had one thought in mind to get there and play it. Super pass from Villani. Nicoletti can't put it away. Oh, that's good shooting. Masane again out on the wing. Didn't make it happen first time, but certainly made it happen second time. And Italy call a timeout. <laughs> Okay. ok, Annina, fatti dare, diamo la palla bella rapida, entra tutta, eh, perché stai gestendo un po' il colpo, dai, rompiamo il ghiaccio così, vai, andiamo! There's a Sarai going off Alberti. Ok, vai. Tried the line block of first hit, and then went for the middle block the second hit, and got the point. Alberti, not the tallest of middle blockers at 185, so sometimes that timing is out. Watanabe in to that front line for Japan. Italy sticking with their replacement players for the moment on that double substitution. Nabea serves. Good pass from Pietrini. <laughs> That's sweet. That is very good from the young Italian. He's 19 years of age, made the pass and hit the pipe. That's quality. And we're seeing some really high class volleyball in this opening set. And still no closer to knowing who's gonna go one nil up. Japan certainly now with a chance, 23-21. Osenai, another fabulous kill. Watch the drift on this. She jumps inside to out. No chance for the blocker. Had no idea where that was going, Nicoletti. Trouble for Italy. Two touches on the ball. Pietrini called for the double. And referee Alexander Siganic getting that one absolutely right. Got to be volleyed simultaneously with the hands, and that bounced between the two. Three set points for this Japanese team that just looks so comfortable out there at the moment. Good serve. Oh, it's wonderful defense. Oh, both sides, brilliant. Japan, swing for the set. Ishii puts it away. And that is fabulous from Japan, from 20 onwards. Thoroughly prepared. If you're going to do it, do it properly. And that's what they did in set one. Set two then, away we go. Italy with the serve. Well, messy first point, but Japan get the ball on the floor and open up the scoring. More super defence from Kobata. Japan have turned out an incredible string of libero players. And when the position was first invented by the FIVB back in around about 2000, this specialist defensive position, Japan really embraced it. And Kabata for once beaten. Deflection from the block off Sarakaiti's hit. Decent set from Oro to the former Lithuanian player. Super swing. It's fascinating watching the bear in the warm-up. She takes off for all her practice spikes and just hangs in the air, balanced, weights, hits. And that was very, very well played. Pietrini on this occasion, beaten in the block.
Free ball, Italy. Didn't make the most of it. Net touch from Oro. Or played in uh, Japanese airspace. Either way, it's Japan's point, 3-1, and in danger of running away with things here. The Japanese players, we've already had one demolition job in semi-final one. Poland coming through against Thailand, 3-0. Not a complete demolition. Thailand played really well in the third set. But Poland pretty comfortable in the second, 25-9. They look good. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, there's something else you don't see very often. Total mix-up. Asanai getting the wrong call from the setter or getting the call wrong. Pietrini. Serve easily passed. Recycled. Sorokaiti rolls it into the corner. Oh, that is just genius. Well, those are the shots that you pay good money to see because that was brilliant. What an Arby. Be quick. Found quite beautifully by Seki. She's unloaded on that. And I think Sorokaiti got a leg on it to keep it in play, but no way of bringing it back by Italy. No, missed. Villani of the piece, I'm afraid, at the start of this match. Hasn't done a lot right as the tall Italian wing spiker. What a pick up and what a block and things going from bad to worse for the number 23 for Italy. May see a substitution soon from Mazzanti. No, nope, he's gone for a timeout instead. Italy in trouble in set two. Italy in trouble in this match. Hey, Popolo, riprendiamo a fare le nostre robe come prima, eh? Che il cambio palla è sempre andato e lo facciamo andare. Tanto con loro lo sappiamo, non dobbiamo tanto spallettare e cercare i colpi decisivi perché poi diventa, diventano tossi, no? In quel gioco lì. Una roba, abbiamo detto che quando la palla si, si schiaccia, ok? Le seguiamo un po' perché tanto giocano sul lato corto e quindi le andiamo a prendere. Invece le siamo un pochino più larghi sul perfetto in modo che poi con un accostato riusciamo ad arrivare, ok? Dai, via! Italy experiencing what every team that plays Japan experiences. The ball just keeps coming back. And they've got to find a way of staying patient enough to cope with that. Try and use the Japanese block a little more. Get some hit outs or block out hits just to try and mess the Japanese defense up a little. Another good middle offense this time, though. Finesse instead of power from Watanabe. work from Italy Sorokaiti in particular in defense and again Japan equal though to the offense and then finally a mistake from Japan and, and uh, we've not seen any mistakes from Osanai in this game up until then the number 21 for Japan playing some exceptional volleyball but just gets it wrong on that occasion. Too much cut on the ball, takes it wide. <laughs> Lovely kill from Ishii. Never too far from the action, the number seven. Incidentally, in that last timeout for Italy, doesn't matter 
how big a superstar you are in Japan, and uh, I promise you, Iwasaka, the captain, is one. Well, she was there bringing drinks, fetching towels, and just basically being part of the coaching staff. That attack definitely works for Italy. Pietrini running on that back pipe, but it's not a 10. It's not going completely on the reverse. It's just behind the setter down the middle. But she hits that beautifully. Very impressive athlete, Pietrini. But still young, still a teenager. Still finding her way in the game. Well, Villani can't find her way into this match. And uh, her position on court, I think, is probably a little tenuous right now. Not sure what Davide Mazzanti's options are, though. With Bazzetti in the libero position, he can't really bring anyone else on. Italy will take that. Coach Nakada in her new role, looking after this Japanese women's team. That's not great from Japan. Chance for Italy to score here. And they've gone to that reverse pipe again, and that should settle Villani down. She's such a talented player, is Villani. Two points the difference now. Italy gradually closing the gap. Far to serve. <laughs> I'm afraid that's uh, way too far. Well, some encouraging signs over the last few points for Italy, but it's a bit of ebb and flow still in this set. Good work. Italy staying patient, finally getting control of the ball. And a good flat set to Pietrini. She nails this one. What a pass. Oh, oh that is just dream volleyball. That was a huge hit from Sadakaiti on the serve. And Kubata just took a step back, the Japanese libero. And just played it in soft as you like to the setter Seki. And a wonderful reverse quick through the middle. No. Double. Well, all the Japanese players are multi skilled, but. The ball just slipping through Watanabe's fingers on that occasion. Nice look from the referee's perspective and a fairly straightforward call for Alexander Sikanic. And there's the change that we were expecting. Let's wait for this uh, first point to be over. And I'll tell you a little bit about the new Italian player on court. Well played by Japan, rescuing the point. But uh, Silvia and Wakalo uh, in the number 15 shirt has got some jump on it. Just watching in the warm up, and she was getting head and shoulders comfortably over the net. The 19 year old, real talent. Another Club Italia player. And Italy are going to have to look to their youngsters now because uh, Japan once again building up a handy lead here. What a cracking serve from the Bayer. Another great introduction into the game from the new player on court for Italy. But Tenwakela will provide real 
power and real height at the net for Italy. Italy. It's just whether she's got enough ball control to play in the left side position because normally she plays opposite in that opposite spiker role right side so it doesn't have to do a lot of service reception. Well, great height, great jump from the Italian block but great awareness of where to just roll this ball. It's a really clever play from Watanabe. Alberti, the Italian middle, beat on that last play, replaced by the libero, and this is the problem that Italy are going to have. I know Villani wasn't having a great game in the front court, but she's still a great passer. And Mokela uh, isn't quite up to it at this level. Oh, this is super stuff. Italy just uh, capitulating again, I'm afraid. Asanai, too good. And Mazanti forced to call a timeout. Tecnicamente il ricettore è ben cambiato, eh. prima eravate tutti in attacco con le spalle avanti, adesso stiamo arretrando e poi la palla ci rimane solo in, lì in mezzo al campo, quindi tenete le spalle avanti e poi andiamo. L'altra roba, i centrali stanno facendo punto, però in pallonetto, quindi va bene anche l'uno contro uno come avevamo studiato, ok? Però su tutte le situazioni, quindi la pass corre il 2, sul primo tempo il 4-2 che corrono e poi sui, sui laterali, quando sono sul perfetto, state un pelo più larghi e poi vi gestite come cacchio volete, andate a cercare. Italy can't get the ball to their setter Oro, they can't run a first tempo attack, so they can't pin this Japanese block down and they can't cause problems for the defenders. So a little shift in the passing unit, Sarakaiti, the actual opposite player on court at the moment, he's going to come in as the new passer. Next to Pietrini, and another stonking serve. Goodness me, Japan playing well. They really are playing well. And they just lit the blue touch paper here in Montreux. This is a hell of a service run. Osanai putting a bit of side spin on, a bit of top spin on. And causing Italy all sorts of problems. And Japan have it under control again. Oh, super block from far. Italy needed that. Again, great choice because the setter, Seki, knew that Osanai was hitting the ball well from the service line, so why not hit another one? But far had other ideas. The 17-year-old middle blocker for Italy. <laughs> and that's brilliant. Umwakela is... He's just jumping out of the gym. That was a stunning finish. Watch how far she gets over the net here. That's ridiculous. Not a tall player either at 1 meter 80. Japan. Working the ball off the hands. Sotokaiti not happy. Took a hit in the eye at, eye at uh, some point in that rally, which is a real problem if you wear contact lenses. And it's uh, not unusual to get clonked. If you're a wide blocker, the middle blocker's elbows can be flying all over the place. And Farr's just landed and elbowed Sotokaiti in the eye. But she looks okay. Overpass. Not dispatched. Well played, Italy. But all out of shape. No defenders available. And Japan just run it again. Very impressed today with all the work that uh, Agutagawa has done in front court, the number 24 for Japan. Really mobile, really jumps in that middle position. <laughs> DJ, DJ right on the money with the Rocky theme. Italy looking a bit punchy out there. wide with a bit of help from the net from Sarakaiti. Eight points the difference. This is Japan's set to lose. 
And Davide Mazzanti knows that if Japan keep playing like this, he's fairly close to the last throw of the dice in terms of who he's going to start on the last set, if it is the last set. A serve to rub salt into the wound. Watanabe delivers 21-12. That moved all over the place. That looked a long way out and then flew back in. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> well, forget that that is a fault called by the referee against Italy and just enjoy the fact that that was another wonderful one-handed set from Otto. Caned away by far. But according to first official Alexandra Sikantic, this was done all in Japanese airspace. And unfortunately, on this occasion, that isn't correct. That was Italy's point. <laughs> well, once again, some terrific attacking from Italy. But Japan just keep recycling the ball. And uh, Mukela loses her position on court. Villani back on, and I suspect she will stay on. Good retrieve from Otto. Good hit from Sadakaiti, but Japan just go again. Mix up from Japan, though, on that occasion. And that gives a second bite of the cherry to Italy, and this time Sadakaiti puts it away. Still the key for Italy is the woman in the number one shirt. But she needs to do far more of that in this match if Italy are going to come away with anything. And there is Bozzetti, who would have normally been starting through that wing spiker position, but thought she had a few shoulder problems yesterday when I watched her play. And that looks like it is the case. Superb. Pietrini off the outside hands of Seki, the setter. Seki, not the tallest of players, and only reaches around about 280 on that block. And you've got Pietrini coming in at her, touching 330, so it's no contest. Japan will go again. Sweet hit. What a clever play. And I've said it before in this game, and I would imagine I'll be saying it again, but Yuki Ishii, when Japan need her, just comes up with some terrific shots. Nothing flash, just clever. Another one-handed set. And another great block from far, but just drifts wide. Well, this is immensely frustrating for Italy because I'll be absolutely honest, he's sticking with the lineup. So the Azuri, no changes. And Japan, no changes. Japan now one set away from a place in tomorrow's Montreux Volley Masters final against Poland. Italy have got to do something to turn this around. Well, Farr just looking across to coach Mazzanti to say, what did I do wrong? Which didn't do a lot wrong at all there. The block just drifted too wide. Pietrini goes hard at the hands, the 19-year-old. Really does leap, does Pietrini. And because she's already tall at 1 meter 90, it's got a great spike. Far to serve. Not been as influential since a very good first set, the youngster. And this block is just so fractured. Italy have got to sort this out. They're swing blocking to get extra height, but drifting away from where they need to. In fact, they didn't swing block on that occasion. That was just straight hands up blocking and still couldn't close. That's nice. Oh, and even better from Japan. 
Akutagawa, it is with the block. 28 years of age now. Doesn't always get a lot of court time for Japan, but on today's evidence, I think she's got a chance of playing quite a bit in the VNL this summer. What a set and what a block. At last, Alberti gets in on the action. Great stop from the number two. After a brilliant set from uh, deep from Seki. But of course, as soon as the ball is coming from deep from the setter, then the blockers can read where it's going. And Italy, still one of the best blocking nations in world volleyball. Usually so well organized. Pick up. Not this time, though. Well, Parocchiali kept Italy in the rally in the libero with a couple of really nice plays, but in the end, another deflection off the block. Cleverly played by Japan and out of Villani's reach. And Italy do not look happy down there. Just into the roof from Ishii. Piotrini getting some serious heat on this ball. And it's a good piece of defense, but just brushes one of the beams going across this roof in the Omnisport arena. Different serve tried from Piotrini. Just over the baseline. Look far away, and I think under the challenge system, Italy probably would have had a look at that one. Nabea to serve had a good service run last set, going with the jump float instead of the jump top spin. Good pick up from Kabata, and a superb kill. Osinai was uh, nearly on the three meter line when she hit that. That ball was not tight to the net. And that was a phenomenal arm swing from the number 21. Us and I will continue to build her stats at this tournament. What a service. Oh, that's brilliant. And Japan again with chances to score. Us and I off of Alberti. Well, they've still got uh, uh, Alexandra Bottazat on the bench hey, of Italy, 1 metre 97, they might bring her in, but time out of Italy. They might bring her in, but time out of Italy. Su queste palle alte dove sono un pelo più scontate, uno il tempo, ok? Loro attaccano sempre con un po' di ritardo, quindi dobbiamo, possiamo arrivare meglio, ok? E fermarci. E occhio una roba, quando la palla è staccata o quando la palla è corta, entrate pure, perché sennò poi c'è un sacco di diagonali da difendere. Ok? Dai, via! Dai, dai, Trouble for Mazzanti. He's tried to cover the absence of Bozzetti, but she's such a stabilizing influence in the backcourt. Such a super passer. She's not going to get on ahead of uh, Parocchiali. There is Bozzetti. I think her shoulder was sore from yesterday and just felt she couldn't provide enough firepower at the net. And no problem with firepower on that occasion. Alberti running the slide D, the middle player going around the back and off one leg to just give him that extra little bit of distance and reach. Generally speaking, volleyball players jump off two legs because two legs is better than one. But not always where middle players are concerned. Oh dear, an out of system as we so it just doesn't happen for Italy, I'm afraid. In system when you have control of the ball and you can play what you want to play, but out of system is where the big teams 
really make their money and still put the ball away. That's what Japan are so good at, playing out of system. Good pass from Villani. Sadakaiti into the net, so Japan will recycle. Oh, that is just brilliant. Well, she's a bit of an unsung hero, is Yuki Ishii in this Japanese team. And that's probably one of the hits of the game because that ball travelled so far in the air, right across her body, and she still nailed it into the corner. 9-4 Japan. Well, we haven't seen that since the first set. And just a timely reminder of what uh, Sarah Louisa Farr can do. Hard to believe she's just 17 years of age. But if she stays fit, Italy have a world-class player in the making in Farr. And she's alive to that danger as well. Good work. Knew the second touch was coming from Seiki. Slight concern for coach Kumi Nakada. No. Pietrini waffles that one over the baseline. Well, when you're swinging hard on the ball, with that kind of arm speed, occasionally you're going to get it wrong. And uh, the youngsters will make more mistakes than the more experienced players. And Pietrini's still a youngster, but a good pass from her. Nice recovery and a super pipe attack. Well, Japan playing so well in this match that Despite Kumi Nakada, their coach, looking a little concerned, still no need for her to call a timeout in this game. All the concerns have been with Italy, and that's going to be Japanese point. And there is the youngster just getting a little overzealous. Yeah, just touch the hand of Seiki, and you can't do that. The setter has to be allowed to set the ball without any obstruction. Now, here's an interesting move. So, yesterday, played very well in the libero position. Did uh, Kira Di Batoli. And now, Batoli comes into the back line as a wing spiker passer for Villani. Oh, that's so clever. Nabea saw Pietrini drifting and just waited for her to come away from that blocking reach and start to lose her shape in the air. And then just poke the ball off the arms. And it's Italy once again that have to stop the match with the well, very animated from Davide Mazzanti. And you know us commentators, we uh, love a cliche. And I'm afraid that timeout was a last chance saloon timeout. He knows his team are in real trouble here. And the Azuri have got to fight, and they've got to fight hard. Oh, good block. And good recovery from Italy. Well, that's real heart from the Italians. Far blocked, but great uh, defensive work to keep that ball alive. Far goes to serve. Alberti to the front line in that middle blocking position for Italy. Has struggled to influence this game. There's the number two. And there we go. Has got nowhere near those kind of attacks. 
And once again, just watch how early a good Tagawa shows. She's in the air, she's ready to swing. And Seiki just pumps the ball to her. What a serve. Pietrini in off her wing, misses. Oh, lines judge says it touched the Jap Japanese block. And Japanese blocker agrees. Good call by the officials. That was a fingertip. Fingernail, actually. <laughs> Sadakaiti, boy, do they need a serve run from her. It's just not going to happen, though. And ball control equals all of your options open. Japan in system today have been stunning. true to say that uh, Porocciali was knocked off her feet here because she was trying to absorb the power but going backwards there was nowhere else to go once she got hit not a superb swing from Nabea and Japan since they took control of this game in the back end of the first set have not relented good pass superb set but nothing doing for Italy and Nabea puts another one away it's a beautiful sliding hit. Just drifts in the air again and then wraps it down the line once she realizes where the block has established itself. <laughs> and the usual fantastic celebration from the Japanese players. At last, an error. Well, Akutagawa in the number 24 shirt has had a superb game. So is Kabata in that libero position. She's been everywhere. But not just the defence, it's not just the spectacular plays from the libero. It's being able to pass the ball. Right on the head of the setter. Well, unfortunately, Seiki just overstepping and drifting into the net. Unfortunately for Japan, that is. Fortunate for Italy. There it is, just a brush of the net with the shoulder. And the net completely out of bounds to the players. But Pietrini can't make Japan pay. And the match is sliding away from the Azuri. Multiple changes coming. The double substitution, so Kambi will come in for Sarakaiti. Once Japan have made their substitutions. And the well, this occasionally happens with the electronics, so Japanese assistant coach trying to press for a substitution. So Japan going to make their own double substitution, but unfortunately the timeout signal went off. But that's all been rectified now. So Sato comes in for Kabea. Kabea and then uh, Nagagawa, the replacement opposite player, comes in for the set at Seiki. So A-string setter Sato is on. Nakagawa, B-string opposite player is on and then on the other side of the net for Italy Nicoletti is into the front line which brings the uh, third setter Camby onto court so still no chance for Malinov to play and there won't be the Italian captain I didn't think she looked injured in the warm-up certainly took a full role in that but not being used here by Davide Mazzanti in this semi-final Carlotta Camby in the number three shirt. On court, but may not be on court for long because Italy cannot string a combination of points together. And that's been their problem all match. They've scored, but then not followed it up. So they haven't scored in twos and threes. Whereas Japan have, and they've done it at will.
An all too familiar story. Japan continuously recycling the ball and then using the hands of an unbalanced Italian block. Off of the hands, into the antenna. And it's point Japan. Gilani not happy. Couldn't get a swing on that one either. And Italy, I'm afraid, are done and dusted. I don't think there's much left in the tank for the Azuri. Couple of star players on the bench watching and may end up not influencing this game at all towards the end. Super hit from Nicoletti. Nicoletti back to serve. This would be where you normally would reverse the double substitution, but Mazzanti isn't going to do that. He's going to leave his two substitutes on. So Nicoletti will play across the back line. Camby will have to block. Good service. Beautifully controlled by Japan. And they will attack again. Tremendous pickup. Well, that's superb from uh, Parochiali, and no wonder she's frustrated with her teammates because they just stood and watched. Look at this for a pickup. This is really tricky to get to and keep in play, but she's done it. And then has to watch while everybody else just lets the ball hit the floor. It's a tough gig, Libero, sometimes. Good pass. Superb. That is not an easy set from Camby to Far. Came right across her body. And the Volley Bergamo playmaker finds the big 17-year-old through the middle. But uh, Far is tall, but she's a super athlete. Really moves well, really jumps high. And Japan now just going through the motions. So, substitution reversed. Good front line for Nagakawa. But Seki, the setter, comes back in, as does Nabea on the front line. So, Nabea now three rotations in the front court. And Japan really should be able to see it across the line from here. Opportunist attack, not planned from Camby. Poor pass, pokey over. Unfortunately for Italy, there was no one at home in backcourt for once for Japan. And I do mean just the once, and even then, it was still a valiant effort to make the play. Far to serve. Japan playing with such confidence. Now remember, they lost to Poland in the group phases. Three sets to one, and it looks like it's going to be a rematch. Poland against Japan in tomorrow's final. And Villani. Well, almost gave up on that pass. And plenty of match points. Nine to be precise for Japan to finish what has been a very thorough and professional job in this match. Yuki Ishii to serve. One last roll of the dice, courtesy of Nicoletti. Super kill from the backcourt from her. Big service run required here from Camby. Nicoletti back in the front line. So Italy have got big blockers to work. And they need a big hit. Not coming. Japan for the match. Blocked. Osunai again. And this time gets the job done. No. Oh my goodness. Well, no touch signalled. 
And it has been reversed. The decision reversed because the Italian players finally had to say, look, come on, we touched it. And Davide Mazzanti at the heart of that decision. So no arguments at the end. 